Hello, Senior Stoner fans. It's the real Senior Stoner back at you for your dab of the day. Today is Wednesday. Hello, everybody. Um, before I start the topic of the day, there are a few important things I, I want to take care of first. First and most importantly, in a totally non-sectarian way, but very American, I want to salute our men and women that take care of us and protect us, 724-365 in the armed forces of the United States of America, and I pray that they're safe. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I don't pay much attention to politics and world, but I want you to all know that if you have family, friends in the military, Senior Stoner supports them in a great way. Um, God bless America, and God bless our forces that might be in harm's way. Now let's move on. A few things I want to get out of the way. This is not sponsored by anybody. This is mine, as everything else is that I purchase and use, or that gets dropped on my doorstep and I use. All mine, no sponsorship, nor will there ever be. Um, and I want to talk about one comment somebody left me, is why do I support Focus? I don't support Focus. I like the Carta. I don't support Puffco. I like the Peak. It's not about the companies for me, it's about the devices. So I just want to get those things out of the way. And now to the topic of the day, which unfortunately is very significant because my back pain, although it's not neuropathic, is extremely hard right now. It's hard for me to walk. It's hard for me to stand. Um, and here goes the topic. What happens when we lose our support system? You know what I'm talking about. You're beginning to say, what is Senior Stoner getting at here? What happens when the people in our lives that take care of us and help us do everything are gone? What happens if the support system that we've had evaporates? I'm going to go over different scenarios that make this happen. But this is real. This is not what we think. This really happens, and we must, must have a contingency plan because of the severity of the reality. Tomorrow, Mrs. Stoner and my daughter are going to see my 102-and-a-half-year-old father-in-law in West Palm Beach, going to see my wife's father. Wonderful thing. I used to do it all the time with them. It was wonderful. Well, I can't fly. I don't fly. And I don't do hotels. I probably can't. And because of this, Mrs. Stoner in particular is going to be away from tomorrow. That's Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, coming home Sunday night. So Senior Stoner is going to do something he really rarely does. I don't do it well. I'm going to be home alone. And you're thinking Macaulay Culkin, whatever his name was, from the old movie Home Alone. Well, in a slapstick stored away, imagine everything painful in the universe coinciding all together in one ball at one time and falling on you. It's what happens to me when I'm home alone. I have responsibility for the animals to feed them at early hours. I have responsibility, because we have a cat also, the responsibility for myself to make sure I take my medicine, medicine, make sure I eat on time. Mrs. Stoner calls me every day, multiple times. I've got to be very careful if I go anywhere. There is no support system here. My son lives 30 miles away and has a life of his own. I don't have... Anybody that's going to stay here with me or spend the days with me, my good friend's going away over the weekend and will be gone. And what happens when this happens? What can we do? Today's Wednesday. What can I do Wednesday ahead of tomorrow when it starts? Well, I can calm down because I think calming down allows you to assess things a little bit better. There's an old saying, look at what is. Look at what you want to have happen and then determine how you're going to get there. What is, is I'm going to be without support. What will be is I normally worry my ass, make it worse, have a great deal more pain when she's gone, and 
don't eat right or well, and things kind of slow down in my life. I don't do as much. Even though I don't do much at all, I do even less when she's not here. I'm afraid of something happening. So for me, the reality is I shrink my already shrunk life to even less. Let's go further. What if your caregiver, caretaker, is here because of money? What if you have somebody working for you, caring for you? What if your money goes away? It's a more permanent state. What do you do? These things can happen. What if you're in a facility, unfortunately, being taken care of by others, and they give you a letter saying you're out of here tomorrow? What if you have a beautiful home? Everything's fine. You can't make your payment. You're out of here tomorrow. What do you do? In our shape, in our pre-existing pain prison, on the hamster wheel of pain, with all that now coming our way, what do you do? Well, if you don't do it in advance, you're out of luck because you're going to be flipping that hamster wheel 50 times faster looking for a desperate solution that isn't going to come. Unfortunately, you must do what we're doing right now. You must address the situation ahead of time because you know this is not a gamble. This is prediction based on fact. You know what's going to happen. You know when it's going to happen. Now you need to take steps to impede that happening. You need to take steps. Get food in the house. Get a couple of good Netflix shows you want to watch. Make sure your clothes are laundered because you can't do it yourself. Make sure you have the phone number of 911 handy. I'm not scaring anybody. My point is anything can happen when you're alone. When it's alone and you're used to having people or things take care of you and help you and assist you and mitigate the pain, they're gone. There is no Mrs. Stoner coming home at night to give me a kiss and sit next to me and watch TV. There is no Mrs. Stoner to come in the morning and get sugar and walker so I can sleep. None of that. Life now goes like this. Smacks you in the face. However, you have a chance to go, wait, I have planned for this day. I have planned for this moment. It's okay. Now, we've discussed who moved my cheese. Well, your cheese is getting moved in a big way here when this happens, when your support system evaporates for whatever reason. Your cheese is moved in a big freaking way. And I can't tell you to not pay attention to it. I must tell you to make adjustments for it as soon as you can. When you get the notification, forget when it's happening. When you get the notification that it's going to happen, when the airline tickets are purchased, you got to make plans for what's going to happen when they're not going to be here. If you can't make your payment, for your rent or your mortgage, you probably knew about it a couple weeks in advance. You must start planning for it now. <sighs> Jobs. Today, you have to be notified in most cases if the company is going to shut down. Plan, for God's sake. Plan. If it's financial that's been your support system, find a way to downsize. If it's people of taking care of you, doing things for you that have been your support system, do less. So there's less that other people would have had to do because they're not going to be here. Finally, and maybe the most difficult one, is what if the situation that takes our care and feeding away from us is natural occurrence? What if it's a hurricane that comes and even though Mrs. Stoner's here, we can't get to the drugstore. I can't get to the supermarket for food. We're in a natural disaster. Your support system is done. What happens then? Well, certainly, that's a whole different animal than somebody going on vacation or going to see somebody for a few days, leaving you home alone. 
Home Alone and a natural disaster are two different things. But we must remember they're somewhat birds of a feather because your support system evaporates either way. This is a nicer way for it to happen when somebody says, I'll see you in a few days. Then, oh my God, I'm in Red Cross shelter, God forbid. But barring the catastrophic for the moment, barring the catastrophic, you must build an entirely new sandbox. You have a sandbox built for two or for whoever, however many people help you. You have a sandbox built so that you don't have to reach too far because people get things for you. You might not have to drive. People drive for you because it's painful for you to do these things. Well, guess what? It's going to be those four days. You're going to have to do those things if you need to do them. Now comes the list of triage. Now you begin to think, what do I absolutely have to do? What do I have to do? What do I think I have to do? What do I want to do? What do I not have to do? You begin to look at the priorities all different when these situations present themselves. What I'm hoping is that by me discussing this with all of you at the beginning of the year, we're going to be better equipped to deal with these situations throughout the year. They're going to happen. I don't know how often they're going to happen, but they're going to happen. And so what a template would be, would be create a template. That means a situational cover support system for yourself that would fit on any situation in an emergency. Maybe it's as simple as seven days extra medicine to solve that problem. Maybe it's as simple as getting a little bit more comfortable with things like Uber, which I've never used, or getting more comfortable with the delivery system that they now have out there, Uber Eats, uh, all these companies that deliver food, DoorDash, you don't have to go out and get it anymore. It can come to you. There's a price for that, but there's also a price for you going. What is the pain price going to be for the four days you're going to be alone, Senior Stoner? How much additional pain am I going to have to suffer to do all the different things that are done for me myself? Think about that one. It's a scary one because when you add it up, it's brutal. The average person wouldn't even be able to do it because the add-on is worse than the pain people endure their entire lives. You know what I'm talking about, those of you who suffer what I suffer, okay? And unfortunately, it's very focused now on my lower back. And I don't know if it's going to be okay for the neurostimulator. The pills are not taking it down. I'm in a very difficult spot, and I'm going to be alone. So my solution tree already is now beginning to roll in my brain. And number one is do less, unfortunately. Do less. I'll say it again, do less. I am going to let my fingers do the walking. Remember, I tend to spruce up and puff up a little bit for Miss Senior Stoner when she comes home because I want to look good for her so she is happy with me. I know she loves me, but it's nice to show a better side of yourself. I don't have to preen and spruce while she's not here. I can walk around naked. I don't want to burn anybody's eyes, but you know what I'm saying. So I'm going to put forth the effort instead to reducing and keeping my pain at the least possible it could be at. I'm on the wheel. I'm in the prison. But you know what? I still got a brain and I can still talk. So I am going to work it out that this situation that's about to happen isn't as bad as it could be. I'm going to do all the things I said. I'm going to find things to watch on TV. I'm going to make sure there's food in the house today. I'm going to not go and do as many things as I would normally do while she's here, because she's here at night to make me feel more comfortable. And I'm going to remember the most important mantra, not to let my ego get in the way. I'll say it again, not to let my ego get in the way. And I'll say it one more time, not to let my ego get in the way. This is a male, female, young, old thing. You all know what I'm talking about. Whether you want to look good for your parents and grandparents or you want to look good for your spouse, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, well, I'm not going to be pulling any of that shit. I'm not going to look horrible, but you know what I'm saying. 
This four day period, unfortunately, has to be about me in order for me to make it through. And maybe that's how you survive this. Maybe instead of being our normal trying to be for people, nice guys and gals we are, we become somewhat selfish when these situations arise. And the selfishness is we take care of ourselves because we ain't got no choice. Let's take our dab with today. I'm going to use the, mag the, the uh, Crimson Carter because I like it, not because I've been a fan of the company or anything. And today we're going to have, I'm going to put a uh, sativa in because it is daytime. So I can keep my eyes open during the day today. These are Sour Animal Diamonds. Let me take a look in there. We'll take a piece out. A nice piece. Put it in. You know, it's a harsh topic, I know, for all of us out there. This thing about being alone. But we're all going to face it sooner or later. And we better prepare ourselves sooner than later. Cheers, everybody. <clears throat> Very tasty. <clears throat> Excellent. Very tasty. But as we see, sometimes the car gets a little clogged. They all do. Just got to suck it through. You know, sucking it through on... Um, the atomizer to pull the dab residual stuff through is just like we have to do in life. We have to just suck it up and pull through. So, to end on an up note, you know I'm going to make it fine. And you know you're going to make it fine too. But you must take steps to ensure it. It's not automatic. You don't wake up in the morning and the dog gets fed. Okay? You must take steps to make sure the things you need to get done, get done, and the rest can wait. This is the real senior stoner, hoping that I do okay alone. Cheers. <laughs>